Hi guys, welcome to another video by Optionables. So today is Monday and as such, we didn't have a great day. Neither we lost much nor we made much. So we ended with a minimal profit of somewhere close to 33,000. So the most important learning what we have from today is about community trade, where we are going to discuss the logic behind taking the trade, as well as we are also going to discuss certain adjustment ideas in case if something starts to go wrong. Right. So apart from this, we are also going to discuss what exactly is happening to the markets and what we can expect from the markets in the upcoming week. With that, we'll be quickly moving on to the video before which if you're liking the content on this channel, then please do hit the like button, share this video as well as subscribe to Optionables. And also you can in the comment section below, let us know how your trading day went and for the adjustments or the trade we discuss, you can also add your inputs in the comment section and let us know that how better this can be done, right? It's a collective learning where all of us together as a trading community get to learn something and definitely your inputs are also valued. With that, now we'll be quickly moving on to the video. So first coming to the community trade, later we'll be discussing more about the market outlook. So today around three o'clock, we did put a post in YouTube as well as Telegram, giving a simple short strangle for you to try it out on virtual trade. So it's more an iron condor because it is hedged with 100 points away, both put as well as call leg. So what iron condor did we actually do? So we ended up shorting 17,800 puts and 18,300 calls. So what is the idea of shorting this? The idea is we are expecting the market to end between 17,800 and 18,300. Along with this, we have also hedged it with 100 points away. Just in case if there's a big gap up or gap down, we should always be protected for such scenarios. So now I'm going to explain the logic behind taking this trade. So this is very important to understand. And before that, it is also important to understand. So it is not a compulsion that you should end up trading every week. Some weeks you don't even have to trade. If the week is very volatile, what is the point of taking any position and losing? Right. So that is one thing. Second thing is that you always don't have to take a lot of risk because right now the market is trending. And if the market is consolidating, it makes a lot of sense to go and create a short straddle. But when market is trending like this, so if you create aggressive short straddles, it becomes more and more harder to adjust and handle the position. So it is easier to play it safe in such markets. And once the market starts to consolidate, we can definitely end up creating short straddles or little aggressive trades where we end up getting higher profits. So now we have created a pretty far break even strategy where we have around 300 points on the upside, 200 points on the downside. Before we move on and analyze this trade in depth, so we will try to understand what was the reason behind choosing 17,800 as well as 18,300. So for this, I'll be looking at both technicals as well as open interest. So it's a mix of both based on which I suggested to go for 17,800 and 18,300. So now let's find out on technicals why exactly I picked 17,800. So here I have put nifty three hour chart. And if you look at this, that market had taken support at 17,800 quite a couple of times before. So we can see market taking support here, 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 here. So 17,800 as such is a very strong support zone for the market. That means when market is coming down, we can definitely expect some buying to happen around 17,800. And that's the reason on the lower side, since market decisively broke 17,800, ended above 18,000 and there was a very strong bullish momentum. And that's the reason I thought on the lower side, 17,800 should be safe for this particular week. And on the upside, so if you look at the upside, the immediate resistance is coming at 18,200 because we can see quite clearly here, this is around 18,200, 250 and the market has taken this as resistance previously as well. But in spite of 18,200 being a very strong resistance, we haven't gone there. The reason being right now, the sentiment is very bullish. So we can see that the market has almost rallied 
somewhere close to 700-800 points just in matter of 10 days. And if you see, it has rallied somewhere close to 300 points in last 3-4 to four days alone. So right now, the momentum is very bullish and it is always good to play little safe on the upper side. If we are in the bearish trend, then definitely it makes sense to stay closer with calls. But right now, we are in a bullish trend, so it is okay to keep little far away calls. So that's the reason, even though the resistance was 18200, I just picked 18300 just to be little safer with calls. So this is with respect to technical front and this is the exact reason why we chose both 18,300 as well as 17,800. If you actually look at this chart, so you see a very strong support coming in at 17,800 and very strong resistance at 18,200. So the best or the ideal option would be for us to create a 18,000 short straddle. So you might ask, Saket, why exactly aren't we creating 18,000 short straddle? So the simple reason for this is the market is very volatile. And to be honest, we are not getting enough premium to compensate for the volatility. So how much premium do you think we are getting? Today is just Monday. We still have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we have three more days and together, both C and P together, we are getting around 200 points. And do you think market won't even move 200 points in the next three days? The chances are that it might not move, but there is also a slim chance that the market will actually end up moving more than 200 points in the next few days. So we really don't know because the volatility is very high. So even if it comes, I won't be really surprised. So that's the reason it's always good to stay little wider. And uh, that's the reason instead of short straddle, we have picked a short strangle. So this is with respect to the technical friend. And I hope that this is pretty clear. And also if you're meanwhile liking the content, don't forget to hit the like button down below. So now we'll look at the open interest. When you look at the open interest here, so this is a clear sign of bullishness because a lot of put writing. That too at lower levels, especially at 17,700, 18,000, 17,900, everywhere we saw very strong put writing. So why would people sell put? That is because they are not expecting the market to fall below that particular level. And again, we saw some huge call unwinding. So people will start closing their calls because they're expecting the market to end above that particular level. So this is a perfect sign of bullishness. And when we look at the overall open interest, 17,800 is having the highest OI. This is on the put side. Whereas on the call side, we have 18,000 with the highest OI, but 18,000 is already breached. In case if tomorrow market opens positive, then people will start covering their 18,000 calls also. So this is given that market opens positive. If market comes down, then uh, 18,000 will again act as a very strong resistance. But in case if the market opens above 18,000, then 18,000 will become a very strong support. We'll see a lot of people starting to write put option and also closing their call option. After this, we have some strong call writing at 18,100 as well as 200 also. But the thing is, right now the momentum is so bullish that people can start unwinding their 18,000 calls and start writing 18,100 puts also. So this is what we have seen previously again. And if you see the overall open interest, so there are quite a lot puts compared to calls. There is 58 million puts compared to calls. And again, this is a clear sign of bullishness in the market. So this is the data what we have and that's the reason we have played it safe on the upside. On the downside, I know we are pretty close and in case if something goes wrong, we should always have a plan to adjust. So that is what I'm exactly going to discuss now. So I hope everything is clear till here why exactly we picked based on technicals as well as open interest and now moving on to the trade as well as adjustment. So when you see in the strategy builder, right, right now we have this particular strategy where our risk to reward is one is to three. So three times is the risk, one time is the reward. So we can see here if we make, we make 13,000, if we lose, we lose around 37,000 and this also comes with a good probability of 62 percent 
and you can also look at the break events this is exactly where we want our break events below 17800 above 18300 so we have got that as well so now the question is in case if the market starts moving up or coming down so i am a uh, little confident that it might not come to 18300 but i might be totally wrong because the sentiment right now is very bullish so in case if it starts coming towards 17800 so i'm just going to discuss on the downside on the upside it is something similar so there's a no much difference it would be something very similar so now the thing is you see what is the maximum loss here we are trading with 10 lots and right now we have a loss of around 550 rupees so what is the maximum loss you have so the maximum loss you have is 37000 and how many points is this 37000 when i divide this by 500 so this is going to come to somewhere around 74 points so that means if i end up collecting additional 74 points then no matter where the market falls, let's say it even falls towards 17,000, then also you won't be having any loss at all. So all we have to do is aim at collecting additional 74 points. For which, first we have to make sure that the sentiment is completely changing. People who were bullish today have started to turn bearish tomorrow. And once it is confirmed that the sentiment is slowly changing, then we will start adjusting the trade. So what is the ideal trade adjustment? We are just looking for 74 points. So the most ideal adjustment would be to come and short 18,200. Let's say this is available at 25 rupees. If the market comes down tomorrow, then obviously the premiums would have fallen. Let's say it comes down to 25 rupees and I'll change this to 25. So this we can short. Right now we are short on 10 lots each. This we can end up shorting 20 lots. So you can see that the moment you do that, you bring your break even this side down to 18,237. So now you are comfortable doing that because you saw that 18,000 acted as a very strong resistance and the market was not able to break 18,000. So now the market has to first break 18,000 and then go towards 18,200. So you know that you have pretty good room there. By doing so, out of 74 points what is required, you have already collected 25 plus 25. So why exactly you have collected 25 plus 25? Because you have gone 20 lots short instead of 10. So you have already collected 50 points. So you just need 24 more points. So this 24 points can be collected later on even on an expiry day. So there is no hurry to go and collect this 24 points right away. So this is one type of adjustment what I am telling right now. So and this is called as complementary trades where you end up shorting some additional options to collect additional premiums and cut off your losses. So by doing this, you need 74 points and you have already collected 50. You will need further 24. So you can maybe not do it right away. Wait for one more or two more days and finally end up maybe shifting towards 18,000 or maybe even creating a short straddle at 17,800. So all these are a possibility before which we have to get a confirmation that the trend is changed. So either from OI or from charts, we need to have a confirmation that the trend is changed and the market is not going to hold 17,800. So after that, on the upside, it is going to be something very similar. So apart from this, what else is the option we have? So other option what we have is about shifting the entire strangle down. So right now our range is uh, let's say 17,800 to 18,300. So we see that the market is facing a lot of resistance on the downside and we have already lost around 10k. Let's assume that we have lost around 10k because uh, let's say by tomorrow end if the market actually comes to 17,750, you would have lost around 9K. So you can see the target date. So you will be losing around 9K if it comes to 17,750, which is 250 points down. So this time you can end up shifting the entire straddle, maybe from the range of 17,500 to 18,000, where if the market ends between this range, you will end up getting say 20K, 
right? So you can short 20 lots instead of 10 lots where you will end up getting 20 K. And if that happens, then you have lost 10 K in this trade. You make 20 K in the next trade and you end up booking positive 10 K. And this is nothing but simply shifting of the strangle, right? So this is also one more good option what we have. So this is the idea of the trade and what adjustments we have thought of right now. So there is no hurry to adjust unless we get any confirmation in the trend. And anyways, I'll be updating everything in the community tab as well. So now coming to what we can expect from the market and what exactly is happening to the market. Again, right now I have just discussed regarding Nifty support as well as resistance and Bank Nifty is looking very positive and especially thanks to ICICI Bank. So what is the issue happening right now is that HDFC Bank actually during this COVID has uh, written off around 25,000 crore loans. So it, they have not really written it off. They have restructured 25,000 crore worth of loan. Whereas ICICI Bank has only restructured somewhere close to 7,000 crore worth of loan. So technically HDFC Bank had to recognize this as an NPA, but instead of that, they have restructured 25,000 crore worth of loan. And the market is not very happy with it. They are not really disappointed as well, but they are not really happy with it also. So that's the reason some of the funds have been shifting from HDFC bank towards ICICI bank. And that's the reason ICICI right now is pretty much outperforming HDFC bank in all aspects, right? Overall, Bank Nifty is looking very positive. Today, it also broke 38,000 and it is right now at a very crucial level of resistance. So that is 38,500. So once this thing is broken, that is 38,500, because we can see here, initially this acted as a resistance, later this also became the support. And right now we are at this point around 38,500. If we see a closing above 38,500, then pretty easily we can expect Bank Nifty going towards 40,000 in few more trading sessions. So this level is going to act as a very important resistance for Bank Nifty. And on the downside, we have a very strong support coming in at 37,200. And I personally don't expect this particular level to be breached and market will definitely find support at lower levels and we might see markets heading upwards slowly. So next coming to open interest front. So again, we saw a lot of put writing and a lot of short straddles at 38,000. And we can see here as well, there is some strong call writing at 38,500 and hence that will definitely act as a very strong resistance for this week. If that is taken out, then we can expect further upside in Bank Nifty. So today, even the auto stocks performed really well. All the auto stocks performed really well, especially Maruti. It is now well above 8,000 and even Hero Motors was up by close to 3%. So you can see that uh, when I come to the event calendar, so this week we have a lot of results lined up starting with TCS and Infosys on Wednesday and even Wipro. So all three are coming, all three major IT stocks are announcing result on the same day. Apart from that, we have Mindtree HCL Tech the very next day and HDFC Bank. So the top stocks of Nifty, that is these three plus HDFC Bank, all of them are going to declare results this week itself. And coming to global events, we have definitely the inflation data, which is coming in on 12th of January. Along with this, we also have the US data, US inflation data, which is going to come in on 12th of January itself. So overall, uh, we have a lot of important key results this week, along with some important global events. And uh, it is definitely going to be an exciting week and especially 12th of Jan is uh, expected to be a very important day because we have a lot of results lined up. So this is the overall market outlook for tomorrow. And right now the bulls are pretty positive and we can expect the market to be positive or buying to come in at lower levels. We might not see a huge rally like how we saw from 16,400 to 18,000. We just came in few weeks and we might not see another thousand point rally at the same pace. So the pace will be slowly reduced but we might slowly see the market heading upside so let's hope for the best and see what exactly we have 
for the coming week and i hope that you guys have liked the video and if so then please do hit the like button share this video as well as subscribe to optionables and meanwhile uh, if you have any inputs regarding the trade do let us know in the comment section how we can adjust it or what do you think is the right trade for this particular scenario do let us know in the comment section so with that we also come to the end of this video thank you so much for joining